or omniscience, or omnipresence for that matter, though I might be able to make you gaseous and yet remain alive, and then you could spread through the atmosphere and sort of be omnipresent. But what good would that be? You still wouldn't be omniscient, and thus still could only focus on one thing at a time. Not very useful, at least in my opinion. Nate stopped when he realized that Jack was staring at him. Well, anyway, continued Nate, I'd probably suggest giving you permanent good health. It would negate the methanol now in your system, you'd be immune to most poisons and diseases, and you'd tend to live a very long time. Barring accident, of course. And you'll even have a tendency to recover from accidents well. It always seemed like a good choice for a request to me. Cure the methanol poisoning, huh? said Jack. And keep me healthy for a long time? Hmm. It doesn't sound bad at that. And it has to be a request about a change to me? I can't ask to be rich, right? Because that's not really a change to me. Right, nodded Nate. Could I ask to be a genius and permanently healthy? Jack asked, hopefully. That takes two requests, Jack. Yeah, I figured so, said Jack. But I could ask to be a genius. I could become the smartest scientist in the world, or the best athlete. Well, I could make you very smart, admitted Nate. But that wouldn't necessarily make you the best scientist in the world. Or I could make you very athletic, but it wouldn't necessarily make you the best athlete either. You've heard the saying that 99% of genius is hard work? Well, there's some truth to that. I can give you the talent, but I can't make you work hard. It all depends on what you decide to do with it. Hmm, said Jack. Okay, I think I understand. And I get a third request after this one? Maybe, said Nate. It depends on what you decide then. There are more rules for the third request that I can only tell you about after the second request. You know how it goes. Nate looked like he'd shrug if he had shoulders. Okay, well, since I'd rather not be blind in a day or two and permanent health doesn't sound bad, then consider that my second request, officially. Do I need to sign in blood or something? No, said Nate. Just hold out your hand or heal. Nate grinned. Or whatever part you want me to bite. I have to bite you again. Like I said, that's how it works. The poison, you know, Nate said apologetically. Jack winced a little and felt his shoulder where the last bite was. Hey, it didn't hurt anymore, just like Nate had said. That made Jack feel better about the biting business. But still, standing still while a 15-foot snake sunk its fangs into you. Jack stood up ignoring how good it felt to be able to stand again and the hunger starting to gnaw at his stomach, Jack tried to decide where he wanted to get bitten. Despite knowing that it wouldn't hurt for long, Jack knew that this wasn't going to be easy. Hey, Jack, Nate suddenly said, looking past Jack towards the dunes behind him. Is that someone else coming up over there? Jack spun around and looked. Who else could be out here in the middle of nowhere? And did they bring food? Wait a minute. There was nobody over there. What was Nate? Jack let out a bellow as he felt two fangs sink into his rear end, through his jeans. Jack sat down carefully, favoring his more tender buttock. I would have decided eventually, Nate. I was just thinking about it. You didn't have to hoodwink me like that. I've been doing this a long time, Jack, said Nate confidently. You humans have a hard time sitting still and letting a snake bite you especially one my size. And besides, admit it, it's only been a couple of minutes and it already doesn't hurt anymore, does it? That's because of the health benefit with this one. I told you that you'd heal quickly now. Yeah, well, still, said Jack. It's the principle of the thing, and nobody likes being bitten in the butt. Couldn't you have gotten my calf or something instead? More meat in the typical human butt, replied Nate. And less chance you accidentally kick me or move at the last second. What does it do? Asked Jack. End the world? Oh, no, said Nate. Nothing that drastic. It just ends humanity. I call it the lever of doom. For the last few words, Nate had used a deeper, ringing voice. He tried to look serious for a few seconds and then gave up and grinned. 
Jack was initially startled by Nate's pronouncement.